Hello everyone, this will be a little different video compared to a lot of my other DIYs. In this video, I will be making a 3D BJD doll. For those who don't know, BJD means ball jointed doll. This is not a DIY tutorial video, it is just a video showing you guys what I've been working on. To start off this project, I 3D printed everything and painted and primed my pieces. All materials will be listed below. The theme I was going for this doll was from a project I drew a long time ago. Uh, it was a cyberpunk uh, robot cat girl. And many years later, here I am making her. Now, I'm not skilled enough to craft my own 3D pieces, so I looked online and found some from creative artists online. After finding a good amount of artists that I liked, I downloaded their STL files and started printing. When the prime and metallic lines painted and dried, I started on the shading of her eyes and blush on the lips and cheeks, along with the nose. Now here's the drawing that I did a while back. It's a quick sketch watercolor-ish design that I did on a sketch pad, I think, online. I don't remember how old this thing is, but anyway, I wanted to bring her to life. Now, of course, I had to make the colors up as I went for the eyes and lips and almost all of her facial features. You'll notice that I did not add a lot of pieces from that original drawing into this doll. And that's because along the way I was like, eh, I don't want to add that. Now here for her eyeshadow, I was pretty skeptical of what colors to go with. I was trying to figure out what colors would work best with her hair and her personality. Sharp edges definitely helped up bring out her eye shape, almost like an almond. Then the under eyeshadow brought out the shading and colors within her eyes. Now to bring out the more sharp effect, I use this funny looking thing called a kneaded eraser. These little dudes are super helpful when working with charcoal or pastels. Now a not so fun part working with charcoal or chalk pastels is it gets everywhere on the piece you're working at or on your fingers or even your placemat. So using this kneaded eraser really helps to get the majority of all that stuff. After I was satisfied of how all the chalk pastel was laid out, I used a thin paintbrush with a little bit of gold paint. It is a minor detail, but it makes the orange and gold pieces pop. To give her more of a smile effect, I used some black paint and made indents of where the smile would open. On to my favorite part of this project, it was definitely the eyeliner and eyelashes. After the black paint dried, I then took some fake eyelashes that I got from CVS, cut them down, and glued them onto the eyes uh, with some Mod Podge. Now for her eyes, um, I 3D printed them and then I painted them by hand. Here is a sketch that I did. Uh, and then I put UV resin over them. On her chest area, she has this opening uh, where her heart is supposed to be. It is exposing her wires. So taking some puffy paint, I made some thin lines and went to work on there. Now for her claws and tail. So this is part of a claw from a 3D print. They were too large, so I cut them down uh, and then painted them from the colors you see here. I took one of those pieces, painted it gray, 
and took some styrofoam so I could use it as a bottom piece. For her paw, I took some fake fur, made a simple pattern, and turned it inside out. I did this for her tail and for her ears. I then took a pet shaver and shaved down the fur. To give her claws a more puffy effect, I took some sewing thread and then did some indents onto the paw itself. Taking this special stuff here called Fray Check, I used it on the edges of her ears, tail, and her paws. Because fur likes to get everywhere if you do not Fray Check it. Now this concoction was some stinky soup uh, to give her pieces a raspberry pink effect. I put it in the soup for like an hour. I got the dye from my local Joann's and the pieces turned out okay. The hair was severely damaged, which I was not really happy about, but that was a mistake on my part. Taking a blow dryer, putting it on warm setting, I went back and forth on all the fur pieces to fully dry them. For the tail, I did not actually shave it, but rather brushed it like crazy to give it a frizzy effect. I also did this for the ears. Afterwards, I took some leftover wires from past usage and glued them into place. Here, I also attached a magnet and there's a magnet on her backside. Both connect okay, but it's not really strong. The wire is nothing more than thin copper wire. I don't know what its original use was, but it was just lying around. Here is that 3D plastic piece and those foam pieces put together. This is her connecting port, which is a little bit into her lower. Here are the claw pieces that I cut down and how her paws turned out. They are a little rough, but that gives it a little personality. Here is one of her ears and a really long green wire that I attached with hot glue. That brown part holds a magnet. Now I wanted to be extra and add a glow in a dark effect on her gray pieces. Um, I took this pigment and mixed it with some Mod Podge. Now for the majority of the part, I painted her pieces with a toothpick of the Mod Podge and pigment stuff. Mod Podge on paintbrushes do not mix well. The reason being is Mod Podge is a sealant and a glue. This will ruin your paintbrushes. And without further ado, I give you Evelyn. 